Hi everyone, in this video we are going to look at whether you need Photoshop skills as a UX designer. Uh, we'll also show you the interaction between using Photoshop, there's some pros and cons for that using Photoshop for uh, with Adobe XD. And also at the end of the course I'll show you how to take this image, okay, which is, I don't know, some kind of medium season. Imagine if it was winter. Oh, look at that, it's winter! What about a sunset? Okay, <laughs> uh, it is a very tenuous connection to the course, except that I'm showing you the connection with Photoshop and because I'm the boss of this video and I like to show you cool stuff. That'll be towards the end of the video. But for now, let's build the suspense. Do I need Photoshop to be a UX designer? Drum roll please. Yes is the short answer. Uh, you probably need some Photoshop skills, mainly to do with masking. Okay, uh, you can get by without Adobe Illustrator, which is kind of down to this sort of drawing of shapes. Okay, you can do the fundamentals in XD fine, but in terms of any good masking, you can't do it in XD and you need Photoshop. Now we're not going to cover how to use Photoshop obviously in this course, um, but if you do have Photoshop skills or you'll probably end up working with Photoshop documents at some stage, I'll show you yeah the pros and cons of working with PS and how if you do have some Photoshop skills best to interact with XD. So all right first up let's just do some plain Jane importing of PSD. So somebody else has made it, you might have made it. Okay so there are some tricks and some weirdness. This may in the future iron itself out. Okay XD is a relatively new product and the interaction with PSDs at the moment isn't 100%. Just so you know. Okay, so let's bring in a PSD. Let's go file import and let's bring in something that works. Uh, let's bring in, I've got in your exercise files, Photoshop 01, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so let's bring in 01, bring it in, and here's a giant PSD. And you're like, huh. Okay, so it brings in PSD documents, fine. Uh, the cool thing about it, and one of the pros, is that if you look at my PSD, all right, here it is in Photoshop. Okay, you can see I've masked it out for you. Okay, so there's this layer here and the background that kind of fills it in. So what's happened in XD is that it's brought in both layers and I can see them both. But watch this, I can go inside it, remember, double click. Okay, and look, that is separate. And I can go to this background layer and either delete it, okay, because it kind of brings it in. Let's have a look. Let's bring it in on our layers panel. Okay, and you can see here, there's my PSD. I've got the laptop and I can either click this layer on here or over here and hit delete. Okay, that works. So I've got just on my laptop. Okay, or I can go over here and see these little eyeballs. Okay, I can say background is hide, hidden or hide. <laughs> okay, so that's the cool thing about using PSDs. You can have this layer document, turn things on and off as you need them. All right, let's move him down here or over there. He's quite big. Okay, uh, let's bring in another file that has some problems. So I'm going to go to the shortcut, Command Shift I on a Mac, Control Shift I on a PC. Okay, and let's bring in this O2. Okay, and let's have a look at it in Photoshop. So I'll open it in Photoshop here. So here it is in Photoshop. I've masked up this top layer. Okay, and I've just got this red box in the background for no good reason, <laughs> just to show you that it's masked. Okay, it was on this background here. Okay, and I masked it out real quick. So, so what ends up happening in XD is currently, watch this, if I bring it in and I go, all right, here you go. Huh, what's happened? It's not masked anymore. For some reason, I don't know why, it ignores this layer mask. Okay, I can convert it into a smart object, if you know what that is, that doesn't fix it. What you can do, if you do get this point, you're like, bits of it are not masked. Okay, but clearly there's a mask going on here in Photoshop. Okay, what you can do is you can right click the mask and just say apply it. This is bad and very destructive, but it'll fix it. I'm gonna save it now. It doesn't update automatically. It's kind of a one way street. So I'm gonna import it again. So if you don't know Photoshop, that's the one thing you might have to do. Go in and see if you can squish the layers, okay, and get rid of all the fancy non-destructive masks, because now it works. And again, I can go to the background here, and look at this, it actually brought through the fill of this. Where is it there? I can go, yoop, ho oh, oh. So some things are really cool, and then some things are just a little bit broken. These things will update in the future. Okay, so some layer masks don't come through. All right, another way of working with Photoshop is just pure old uh, copy and paste. So I'm in Photoshop now. Okay, I can do a selection. I'm just going to use my rectangle marquee tool, draw a little selection around, go copy, and I'm using edit copy. Okay, my little shortcut. Go to XD and you can paste it. 
Okay, as long as it's not too complex, weird little masks and adjustment layers and stuff, it just copies and pastes. That's a good easy way if we can get in stuff from Photoshop into XD. Now let's do it the official way, or at least what I think should be the official way. Okay, is using libraries. So I'm gonna do a quick mask in here. Again, I don't expect you to do this or be able to do this. If you do get excited by what we do here, um, check out either mine or somebody else's, okay, Photoshop course, okay. I've got an essentials and an advanced course if you're keen. Okay, but I'm gonna go to select subject, which is a sweet, cool feature. Okay, and my selection around it, great. I'm gonna add a layer mask down the bottom here. Okay, and remember we talked about this being a little bit of an issue. If we go for the libraries, it seems to fix it. So the libraries is a way of sharing between Adobe applications, right? It's kind of like shared libraries. So I'm gonna to go to my libraries. Okay, there's my uh, library for Adobe XD class. I'm gonna close that down to make it a little bit bigger for everybody. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is grab my um, selection tool and just click, hold and drag it anywhere and into here. There he goes, let's give him a name. Phone, where is he? There he is there. Okay, now in XD, remember our libraries are under assets panel, the top here, um, and it's under, you might have to go remember back a couple at the top until you find XD class. Okay, and there's my phone. There he is, buddy. I'm gonna put him over here, he might be a bit big. Zoop. There he is there, the official way. So we've kind of touched on uh, CC libraries a little bit. If you haven't used them before, they're awesome. They're a way of connecting because I can use the same phone and just dump it into my Premiere Pro video file for social media stuff and putting it into InDesign for a magazine layout, all shared assets, same with the colors. Okay, so that's an easy way of doing it. Um, and it fixes the problem um, with our layer kind of being like this. Now, a couple of perks of using it this way is you can kind of see it's linked, okay, which might be a perk, might not be, is in back in Photoshop, I can go into uh, here and it's kind of a one-way street. If you add something from your Photoshop into this, this is kind of his own separate item. If I adjust this now, it's not gonna adjust the library item. So I'm gonna finish with this. I'm done with you, don't save. Oh, how dare he, don't save. But I can open up this thing, okay? It's my phone PSD, they're not connected to the original. And if I do something like, I'm just gonna invert it. Command I, it's a really easy one and clear. Control I on a PC and hit save, just to, so it's very visually clear. I can go into this one. I want to see this little link here, okay? I can double click it. Here in XD, it takes a little while, it didn't do anything. It's a little bit slow on the update. Okay, but it just went and changed. All right, so that's one of the perks. And obviously if you're using it in InDesign or Illustrator or something else, Premiere Pro, it will update as well. And the last one I wanna show you, doesn't have a whole lot to do with the user experience design. It's just some of the, like, I guess I wanna hammer home like why Photoshop is, mm, I'm a bit of a Photoshop fanboy. So there are our alternatives for Photoshop. GIMP is an unfortunately named one. Uh, what's the other one? Not Canva. Mm, Adelaide. Ooh, I can't remember the other ones. Uh, but uh, there's just some things that Photoshop do spectacularly. It's one of the new ones. Um, so you can open up this if you want to give it a test yourself because it's pretty cool. Uh, Photoshop 04. And we're going to go filter and we're going to go to neural filters. They might change the name of this. They have changed it earlier. Okay, I'm going to use this one called Landscape Mixer. It's got a lame name. Okay, turn it on. You might have to download it. It might take a little while to download this feature. It might have moved out of here. Currently it's in beta. It's amazing. Okay, but it might end up just in the filter somewhere. But look out for landscape mixer. And in here, I'm gonna say you, uh, let's just make this one, because I need it now to be winter. I'm just gonna drag out the winter slider. Kick back, watch this. Here it goes, ready? <gasps> Come on, it's cool. It's worth waiting for. Stalling, more stalling. All right, edit a cut to it being done. <laughs> it was done straight away, but look at that. Ooh, oh, man, it just made it winter. I'm not even sure if those are tea leaves, but um, there was a, a vague connection <laughs> to the course. But look at that. I can't believe how cool this thing is. Uh, let's do one more and then I'll let you go. Um, let's do sunsets, let's drag up sunset. Not to full maximum, just I wanna see sun, you're kind of adjusting images, you know, like you're trying to connect them together. It is such a sunset, look at it. And look at like my, like look at this tree. It became summery and sunsetty. Look at it, 
There's more foliage on the trees. Oh, have a play with some of these. Open that folder, go to the images, uh, free image sites that I uh, showed you. And like unsplash and pixels and have a look at like it's really good at landscapes it's not so good with like city scenes and like organic or well, it's really good with organic stuff not good for like man-made things but man i don't know that's why probably always you're going to need photoshop as an option if you're going to be a ux designer especially if you really want to be involved in the design kind of ui side all right um I got super excited and yeah, and I want you to go do Photoshop. Remember, I got an essentials and an advanced course if you want to check those out. But that's going to be it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Hi there, my name is Dan Scott. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to go further with Adobe XD, there is, I have a full course. There'll be a link in the description. It's called Adobe XD Essentials. There'll be a card up here you can click as well. Uh, but yeah, carry on with your day, enjoy, and I might see you in the full course.